Hey, welcome back. Adding products to WooCommerce or your WordPress site isn't difficult really, is it? You go in, you add new, you add your product, your description, your images, your tags, your categories and all of that. Your pricing, your inventory, it's pretty simple. But what if you're working with a client or you yourself have like hundreds of products or even thousands and you've got a very limited time in when you need to get these all uploaded and up running, okay? And um, it's happened. You know, we've had someone who once said, yeah, I want my shop online within a week and I've got over a thousand products. And you kind of go, well, OK, if you want us to do them manually, because they hadn't even got their descriptions or images worked out yet, but they needed it really quickly. You kind of go, OK, we'll charge you ten dollars or fifteen dollars per product to add on. We're not just going to do it as part of the site build cost. And remember, when you do site builds, that's the site build. If someone then says, I've got 20 products versus a thousand. A thousand products has got to cost a lot more, but I'll let you decide on how you start to charge for that. But back to the problem. We've got loads of products we want to do. A thousand. Are we going to sit here now and go through a thousand? That's when you could get things wrong. Human error creeps in. We're all human or in some form or the other. So how can we get around that? Well, you could use the import function for WooCommerce products. And this is how we imported like some uh, demo data into here. Now, what if you what if you want to supply that format to your customer? Well, it's really easy to do that. And I would always recommend that when you're working with someone who is a shop or a store and they want you to add in their products, get them to do the homework and supply you with the Excel sheet because you will be thankful for that much later on. Let's have a look at that. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow because we love having you here. Now, when you um when you first installed WooCommerce, Sometimes it will give you the facility to um, download some dummy data. If, however, you've gone and installed it and you've started working on it and you never downloaded this sample file, it's really dead easy to get it again. All you've got to do is go to the WooCommerce website um, and download the plugin, right? So when you download the plugin, you will get this folder here, right? Well, it's going to be a zipped folder. Sorry, here you go. Look, let me get rid of this one. So we're just doing it from scratch. You just download the, the WooCommerce folder. It doesn't matter what version it is. Well, get the latest version. Double click it to unzip it. And then once you've unzipped it, go into it and you will see sample data. It used to be called dummy data. In the past, it's now called sample data. And what you're after is this one here, sample products CSV. So you can open this with any spreadsheet package you've got. I would say open with Excel because that's 99, I think, percent of the world out there is going to be familiar with Excel. Now, if you look at this now, this is only 25 products. But if I just uh, zoom in just so we can see the detail a little bit better here. OK, what we get is the ID number, which again, they could add. They could even just put one to whatever. Is this a variable? A simple product, so it's just going to be this is the cost of the product variable where you might have variations like a uh, size small, medium, large, black, white, yellow, blue, red, green. There might be variables there. Is it a virtual product? Is it a download product? Now, if they don't fill all of this in, you could probably go through and double check and run through them before you upload or get them to have a think about it. Again, it's a little bit about educating your customer as well or your client with what are the features about products. Here's your SKU name for uh, the, I mean, most people will have a number or a code or something. The name of your product, very important. Make sure there's no typos. Published. If this is a zero, this will not be published now. Is it featured? Well, a one means it's featured. Zero means no. This can be handy when you're adding in the products widget onto Elementor. And you want to say, do you want to show the latest products, the current query? Do you want to show featured products? Is it visible? So we have the term hidden or visible. Short description, obviously, you know, you put in whatever you want. The product description could be a whole lot longer. Again, add in what you want there. You might want to make it a little bit more easy, user friendly for the client. So I would say expand on the columns, the rows and all of that, center things and all of that, make it nice and easy to read. Um, is there any date when the sales start? So we don't have any here, but if there were, you'd put the date in. Is there a date sale price end? So, you know, when you might have something is $20, but for December, it's going to be uh, $5. You put the dates in for that. Is it taxable? Is it in stock? Zero one. Is there any stocks? So well, I'll say, yeah, there's 100 items in stock. This one is not in stock, for instance. 
back orders are loud. You know, look, so where it's no, it's a zero. Where it is yes, it's a one. Binary. Okay. Um, weight, length. Look, this is where you start to add in the details. Um, allow customer reviews. Yes or no. Look, some of them you can have no one as well. The price, the regular price. Look, this is all where it kicks in. Okay. I hope this is all making sense at the moment to what we're doing. Um, I'm going to quickly zip the towards the end. The categories. So when it comes to categories, um, don't do cat like clothing, comma, t-shirts. No, it's clothing, great and symbol t-shirts. If you're going to have another subcategory, you'll have a greater than after the t-shirts. And you might have like v-neck or polo neck or whatever you want to call crew neck, crew cut, crew neck, crew cut's hair, crew uh, um, uh, neck as well. Um, no neck. Um, then you get to um, images. Now, this is where... Hopefully your client has already put the images somewhere. Now, if they can put the images on a Google Drive or something and they actually link back to that, that's going to help you a huge amount. However, that being said, this is something you could do afterwards as well. So you might now add the images in individually because the trouble is, though, what if the client's done the images, but they're not the right size? Like some of them are portraits, some of them, sorry, portraits, some of them are landscape, <clears throat> some of them are square. Some of them are like just the wrong shade or they just look odd, right? They've got a, a background where you need to remove the background. So it needs to be transparent is what I was trying to say. Um, so it can be a bit of like pain involved here. But I would always say educate the client. And when I say educate, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm talking about learning, okay? They learn, you learn, you get to understand what they can and cannot do. Maybe you have to do it for them. Fine, then you might have to charge for that. Remember, though, when you're doing a site build, that's your site build. The WooCommerce store, you know, that might be part of the site build, but adding in products and how they look, that's a different ball game. So you've got to think about it. Don't just say, oh, yeah, here's a blank. Here's the um, blanket cost for it. You know, $100. Yeah, we'll add your products in. You're going to regret that when you realize there's tons of images that are just of the wrong quality. So you add in your images. Now, what if you have more than one image? Let me find an example. Here, here you go. So this has got two images. And the reason why it's got two images, it's got a front image, which is your normal image. And then it might have more images in the gallery. What you do is you just add a, let me just expand on this. You just add a comma and add the next um, URL in for where that image is in comma, the next one, comma, the next one. The very first um, item that is in there will be the front image for that product. Everything else that comes in afterwards is going to be what sits in the gallery for that image. I hope that's making sense, okay? Remember, though, that when you download this, this is already pre-populated for you. So you can go away and have a look at it and learn what it does. Um, and then we have some other items like, you know, like uh, upsells, cross-sells, things like that. I, I don't worry too much about it. I'm more worried about what sat over there with regards to the product. And sorry, over here to what you should be completing and to get things in. This can be important now, attribute one name and attribute one value, okay? So this is where you now got color, we got blue, green, red. Attribute one is visible, yes. Attribute one is global, yes. So you're gonna put one, one, one. What's attribute two? This is the size and in another one we've got logo. And here's where you put the choices, okay? And if we had attribute three, we would replicate those four columns and add them in, attribute four, attribute five, six, whatever you want. Don't go over the top with it, okay? Um, when you have like a downloadable product, you're gonna um, decide, I mean, I would just put it as a single and then you put in a link to where it is. This again is something you might wanna do uh, later on because most likely you're gonna want that item to be in your WooCommerce store or it might be elsewhere. I'll let you decide on how you're gonna do that and make sure your shop is secure. But what I wanted to get at really here was, you got loads of products, right? Thousand of them to add. Your customer's gonna like give you like loads of spreadsheets and Word documents and say, here you go, go rip the image off here or whatever. Get them to do the work. And if they're not willing to do that work, then maybe it can be outsourced to someone to do it. But make what you do more productive with web designing and loving what you do rather than getting bogged down into the detail because if it's the client shop, they should provide the information. And I know a lot of people are not gonna agree with me about what I'm saying about this, but Get that, get, you know, like I said, download WooCommerce, okay, the actual folder, 
go to the uh, unzip it, go to sample data, sample product CSV, open in Excel, change it in terms of, don't change the headers, <clears throat> leave the headers as they are. You can add attributes, but don't change the headers. Don't change SKU to be product, you know, item, order, value, whatever. Don't change that, leave it. Because it's important in how it uploads and goes into the databases. But what you do need to change is the product details. Look, I hope that helps. Um, I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow and I'll see you soon.